What's up guys, today I'll be breaking down and reviewing the exotic scout rifle, it's listed as a scout rifle in Destiny called the Touch of Malice. I'll also be breaking down the necessary steps to get this weapon before the review, and for this you'll have to undergo a multi-step process to acquire this weapon, and that includes beating the, the, the King's Fall raid. But repeat runs of King's Fall are so much easier with this weapon, so it's worth undergoing the whole process for it. Before we start, of note that there's 50 calcified fragments in the game total, but only 47 are attainable as of October 10th when I'm making this review. There's tons of guides on YouTube, so I'd highly advise you to spend the 30-40 minutes, whatever it takes, to get as many of them as you can, at least 45 of them. Uh, there will be many steps requiring a certain amount of fragments to progress, so get them all out of the way as fast as you can. So, step one, it's called the Shattered Past. Eris will first ask you to obtain five calcified fragments, usually, especially when the Taken King first came out, you probably got five relatively quickly. After you obtain 15 total calcified fragments, because the quest will stop till you reach 15, she'll offer you the, uh, uh, the quest name called Hunger Pangs, which uh, requires you to go on a mission to kill Brachus, who's a special Taken Centurion at the bottom of the salt mines in Bunker War 4. It's not too bad, it'll be really easy. Step 2 is called the Old Hunger. Once you enter the raid for the first time, this quest becomes active, and you have to beat three raid bosses to acquire these three items. The Blade of Famine is gotten from the War Priest, the Shroud of ur Anuk is dropped from the Death Singers, and the Ravenous Heart is dropped from Oryx himself. Once you've got all three of those items, you have to get 25 Worm Spore, 50 Hadium Flakes, and 50 Weapon Parts. Uh, Best way I find to get the Hadium Flakes is to head to the Dreadnought, stick to the opening area on patrol and just run circles. It's boring, put on some music and just get it done. And if you bought the Vanguard Ghost, it gives you free Worm Spawn every time you pick up an Engram. So kill things when you do the strikes, when you do the dailies, even when you do the raid and you pick up a blue Engram, bam, there's some more Worm Spore. You'll have too much by the end of the day. If you've gotten at least 35 Calcified Fragments at this point, continue to step 3, which is step three of hunger pangs once you have the frame which is basically buying uh well the frame that for the 25 worm spore hadium flakes and weapon parts you'll have to go and do the undying mind strike and kill Mor morgath lore keeper who's a taken knight in the strike when you're facing the undying mind boss you have to go all the way to the end when you're done go back to eris and if you've collected 45 of the 50 fragments like i said you should probably just do immediately You'll be sent to do a mission on the moon called Fear's Embrace. You have to kill Marzuk, the Marzik, the Blight Caller, who's a taken wizard that spawns when the Echo of Oryx is almost defeated. I'll show you. I'll show you where to go in doing this solo, but a fire team will really help with this mission. Uh, and the one thing is, do not kill the Echo of Oryx until this wizard is dead. Otherwise, you're going to have to repeat the strike. Uh, when you're done, Eris will give you the weapon finally. So here's the review. Aesthetically, a lot of detail looks like it went into this weapon. It looks like a snail in the video thumbnail, or the, the weapon thumbnail, at least like when you're equipping the weapon. Uh, the ball of energy with spirals around it, which actually looks cool on the weapon, actually kind of reminds me of the movie Contact, if you've seen that movie. Statistically, the gun itself starts with a max 310 damage. The fire rate's 52%. It has an impact rating of 35 a range of 64, a stability rating of 40, a reload percentage of 51, and a magazine size of 11. Of note, despite it being a scout rifle, it's also a full auto weapon. On preliminary look, it's quite balanced. No stat makes it look horrible, like it is. it does kick a bit with the low stability rating, but there's nothing abnormally terrible about it. But the perks make this weapon quite abnormal. One of the key perks called Touch of Malice has the final round of the magazine regenerate and deal bonus damage, which is about 1.5 times a regular round, but it takes some of your health away in the process per shot. That means you never actually run out of shots in the magazine, but if you don't want like the per damage shot to hurt you, you're going to have to reload. In terms of PvP damage output, it hits for 30 on body shots and 45 on headshots if you're not using the Touch of Malice perk. Once it does come into effect, you deal 42 on body shots and 62 on headshots, so it's a little enticing. With regard to the skill tree, all Touch of Malices are the same because they're exotics, they all deal kinetic damage. You have an always active perk on called Touch of Malice, which as stated earlier, has the final round of the magazine regenerate and deal bonus damage, but also takes some of your health away per shot in the process. 
As you'd expect, this perk makes or breaks the weapon depending on the scenario. You have three clear options in terms of ballistics. Soft ballistics, which cuts recoil and but also cuts impact. Uh, smooth ballistics, which increases recoil but also range. And lastly, smart drift control, which produces predictable and controllable recoil but slightly cuts into range. My choice is smart drift control simply because recoil that's predictable is very easy to counter and the range hit is not a large detriment. When breaking down the skill tree, the first perk is called Eye of the Storm, which has the weapon become more accurate the lower your health gets. So there's, there's obvious synergy when it's compared with the Touch of Malice perk. It's a double-edged sword though because the more tempted you are to keep shooting for this bonus accuracy, the more health you're going to lose. So you're going to have to monitor both your accuracy and your health in synergy. The next three perks which you'll have a choice over are Snapshot, which allows you to aim a lot faster, better in PvP. Uh, Hammer Forge, which increases range and accuracy, so there's no real definitive downside to this perk. And Flared Magwell, which allows the weapon to be reloaded faster. I personally prefer Hammer Forge, because like I said, there's no detriment to putting it on, and many targets, especially in the raid, will be at far ranges. Snapshot, like I said, is a viable option for the Crucible if you really want to use it there. The last perk is called Touch of Mercy, and it's interesting. It reloads a portion of the user's health after attaining three rapid kills. So against trash mobs, the negative effect uh, when utilizing the damage output of the one round magazine of Touch of Malice is countered by the health regen of Touch of Mercy. Having said that, it's not very useful against tougher yellow bar or major enemies or, or outside the raid, which I'll get to. So you may wish to reload against strike bosses or monitor your health like a hawk. With regard to my overall impressions, in PvE it's, it's a very strong weapon with some really interesting perks, but, but it has that health depreciation trade-off. When I was doing dailies, I regularly found myself low on health or even dying when I was trying to get used to the weapon in situations I'd never die with anything else. You can treat it like any other weapon and reload it once you reach the final round, but you're going to sacrifice a ton of DPS and you'll be reloading, well, every couple of shots. For this reason, while you can use this weapon anywhere with success, I wouldn't consider it the best choice for regular PvE content like dailies or even strikes. If you utilize the Touch of Malice perk, make sure you have some form of health regeneration and you monitor it like a hawk, because you'll be surprised how fast you lose health when firing this weapon. Uh, to be honest, it's for regular day-to-day -day stuff, doing the dailies or even the daily crucible, it's just easier to use another weapon. Now, having said that, for the daughter section of the raid and for Oryx himself in the raid, I don't think there's a better weapon in the game. Uh, when your teammate has the aura of unraveling against the sisters and the aura of immortality against Oryx, when you're shooting the last round of the magazine with Touch of Malice, normally where you'd lose healthier, your weapon deals close to 5400 damage per shot, it never needs to be reloaded as long as you're in the aura, and you don't lose any health in the aura. It's having an, it's like having an endless magazine, uh, an, end, yeah, an endless magazine machine gun at your disposal. It also does an incredible job at staggering Oryx during his fight as well as dealing with adds while you're in the aura. So personally, I don't think there's a better option for the latter portion of the raids than this weapon. I don't even think, other than a sniper rifle when the ogres pop up, about using anything else. Uh, like in, Going to the Crucible, though, in PvP, it's a medium to long-range specialist because of the scout rifle damage model. But because you don't have ways to regenerate health in the Crucible, maybe than, other than grenades or a super once in a while, the suddenly small 10-round magazine is actually kind of a hassle. If you're using the Touch of Malice perk, you're gambling, because the damage inflicted onto you per your own shot makes you easy to finish off by an opportunistic enemy when you're in a firefight, or it puts you in danger of killing yourself in two-on-one firefights. It's certainly a weapon you can have success with, but to be perfectly honest, taking it to the Crucible, there's just so many better options that are way less of a hassle to deal with. Uh, so overall, it's a fantastic weapon in the, the 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 later raid stage. It's probably the best in the game, and it's certainly manageable. Like it's not going to hold you back much in regular PVE content. But I just feel it's way too much of a hassle to either continuously reload or continuously look after every bit of my health every time I'm using the Touch of Malice perk. Uh, I choose other weapon for strikes, and I choose other weapons for the Crucible. But when you're dealing with the the end portion of the raid. 
You will not find a better weapon in the entire game. It's that simple. Have a good one.